into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Verse 7. All shall descend into the deep. That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Verse 8. But what say it is? The wall is nerdy even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Somebody say amen to that. Verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew or the Greek. Between white or black. Old or young. For the same Lord over all is rich unto them that call upon him. Give us verse 8. That's what we're going to be working with quickly this morning. Verse 8. Give us verse 8. Is whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Give us verse 8. He said, but what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is what? The word of faith which we preach. I want to share with us this morning practically on the word of faith. And I'm going to be breaking it down in simple terms because this is an instruction that the Lord has given to me to give to us as we begin the year that giants are rising. He said, the word is not thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. The day you become born again, the day you become a child of God, you are introduced into a new kingdom. Colossians 1 verse 13 tells us that he has brought us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 tells us if a man is in Christ, he becomes a new creation. All things become past away. Everything has become new. When you become born again, you are brought into a new kingdom. A new kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Christianity is beyond a church. Christianity is a kingdom. If you do not realize that Christianity is a kingdom, you will not be able to fully enjoy the blessings of being a Christian. Christianity is not just a denomination. It's not a religious belief. Christianity is a kingdom. And that kingdom is called the kingdom of God. Everybody say the kingdom of God. If you see Christianity that you are part of as a kingdom, you are going to begin to understand some things about the Bible and about Christianity. For example, every Christ kingdom has a king. Two of us. That's why it's called kingdom which means a king domain. So in Christianity, we have a king, and the king in Christianity is our God. I mean, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you understand that Christianity is a kingdom, you will know that every kingdom has its own rules and regulation. Hello now? Every kingdom has its language. Is it true? You have a kingdom, there's a language they speak. When you hear a car or that's not a, a, an Igbo man. That's a Yoruba man. Eh? When you hear Inakwana, that's an Awusa man. She had that man, she had she laughed here. Laugh here. Say, laugh here. That's an Awusa man speaking now. He's speaking the language of his kingdom. There is a way they speak. Every kingdom has the way they think. When you see a typical Igbo man, even if he has not introduced himself, if you look at him, you will know he's an Igbo man. Because there's a way they behave, there's a way they think. Hello now. A typical Igbo man can wear slippers, but he has a shop of 10 million. Eh? Why some other part, I will not measure some other part so that I don't create some enemy here, can wear shoe of 500,000, but he's living in one room. His kingdoms. You got what I'm saying now? The different kingdom culture. There's a way the kingdom they behave there. That if you are born into that kingdom and you begin to live in a way different from the kingdom, your kingdom men, that is your kindred, will ask your father, who born this king? Because it does not behave like us. Hello now. It does not behave like us. 
So the same way the kingdom of God, we have a culture, we have the way that we behave. Sir, what makes you a Christian is not just because you come to church or you carry the Bible. Now if you look at the life of Jesus, you will, you will know that Jesus had a mobile church. True? Everywhere he was going, he carried congregation along. It was an evangelistic kind of mobile church. If you look at the members of the church of Jesus, you will know that it was not just his disciples, even the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and his enemies were there. So the church can be a mixed multitude. What makes you a Christian is that you are born again and then you align to the kingdom that you belong to. For example, Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, for the Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. What does that simply mean? It means that even if the words that you are living in, things are hard, you have a kingdom that you belong to that can supply what you need. Are, are, are you what I'm saying now? It's like a child who is in the boarding school. The parents, they are sending in food stuff. Sending in money. You receive your package this year. Yeah. I was in the body school before. So you, you, your, the next student in the body school with you can be hungry. Say, ah, I'm just hungry. No, nothing, nothing. The food they gave us in the money did not satisfy me. While you that ate the same food, you were not satisfied. So you go, you open your locker with key. Bo, bo, you bring out bovita. You bring out milk. You bring out cornflakes. You bring that cabin biscuit because your father supplied beyond the food in that hostel. So, as a citizen of the kingdom, there should be a supply beyond your salary. And one of the means that God supplies beyond your salary is called favor. Favor is a language and system in this kingdom. When God favor you, a day of favor can be more than 10 years of salary. Am I speaking English? So everyone that is a Christian that wants to enjoy the benefit of God, you need to understand the way the kingdom of God operates. For example, God said giants are rising this year. There are people that are looked down, that they have called nobody, they will become the breadwinners. Now listen, it will be ignorant for you to think that it's a prophecy for Nigeria. It's not a prophecy for Nigeria. It's a prophecy for those that are in the kingdom of God. I hope you know that if Jesus comes today, he's not coming to take everybody in the world. He's only members of his world. Kingdom. That will rapture. So God is focused on the kingdom. Now, why am I saying this now? I'm, I'm trying to prepare your perspective on this subject of the word of faith. Because I want to show you this morning the language of this kingdom so that you can be able to become a giant. Now, any time God speaks, if you really hear God, God will not speak based on where you are. Most times, the things that God will tell you wants to do in your life, when you listen to it and you look at your life, Physically speaking, it's impossible. Hello? The dreams of God are very massive. I mean, a little boy of 17 year old in his father's as 11 child, God appears and says, you will become the head. Everybody will bow to you. There is no way that thing can make any logical sense. The same way when God said, the wet is being transferred to his people this year, 2023. He said, men of wet will rise up from the church. Father, I'm in the church. When you say words, what kind of words are you talking about? Where will it come from? All I have is just a little business somewhere. All I have is just a little job somewhere. You see, what God is saying does not make sense to your presence. But if you truly listen, you will know that it makes sense to your spirit. Because your spirit will agree with God that it's possible for this thing to happen in my life. I want to show you this morning the language of this kingdom, the language of faith. What is the language of faith? Number one, when you become a Christian and you want to see the full benefit of Christianity, the full benefit of what God has ordained for you, the first thing that you need to 
know is that in this kingdom we only say what God says. Hello? Hello? What God says is what, if God said giants are rising, what will you be saying? And I'm one of them. If God says a year that nobody will die, what will you be saying? I won't die. The word of faith is it is the, it's your ability to be able to speak words that God has said. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I hope you know that it's not only God that speaks, even Satan speaks. And Satan wants you to speak what he has said. I know they go anywhere. Now, I don't start again with Wahala. That's not the word that God is saying. What is God saying? Otherwise, we will not be able to enter into the prophecy of the new year. You want to enter into the prophecy of the new year, begin to say what God has said. I am rising. Things are working for me. My business is going forward. I am making progress this year. Who will say with me, I am making progress this year? Come on, you are not saying it well now. Come on, you are not saying it well now. And somebody says, sir, but where is the progress? In this kingdom, what you say is what God has said. Please, I'm not giving you an advice. I'm telling you the only way your Christianity will work. If you speak opposite of what God has said, God will not do what he wants to do in your life. No. You must agree with God. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary, a young virgin, and said you will be conceived and you will have a child without meeting a man, without a physical inoculation with a man, he said, Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. When she agreed with God, she became pregnant. With me, it may be impossible, but your agreement with God makes you a beneficiary of the impossibility. Because our God is a speaking God. Before he does, does the thing, we say it. What did to see whether you were agree? Are you listening to what I'm saying? There is a fact. There is a truth. Every member of the kingdom of God must know the difference between fact and truth. Fact is scientific. Truth is scripture. It is a fact that you are poor. But it is a truth that Jesus became poor so that you can become rich. You must now decide either to go with the fact or to go with the truth. In 2023, let your mind be filled with the words that God has said. Are you doing what I'm saying? When you wake up in the morning and you are going out, wow, honey, today is a good day for you. As you go out, doors are open for you. Everywhere you go, they will favor you. Everywhere you go, they will accept you. Everywhere you go, as you go out for that contract bidding, they will give it to you in the name of Jesus. You know, say, honey, <laughs> I don't know this one you are going for this contract bidding. You know, say, now, nah, it's a cold man, I'm dead here. If they look for only a so called person to give you, you know how you tell talk. Are you, are, 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 am I making success here? So, you know, know how you tell package yourself well, oh, you are not speaking like a citizen of the kingdom. In this kingdom, we say what God says. Now, if God was your wife and you are going for a contract, what do you think God will say? The contract is yours. Talk to me now. Will God say maybe or maybe not? Will God say, where shall I go and try? Please don't try this year. Possess your possession. The word of faith. There is a language you speak. It's not the language of this world, though. The language of this world says, talk and see be. Language of the kingdom says, say what God said. Because we believe that there is a power of God that is greater than every power. And even the heart of a king is in the hand of God. That is, even the man that has said no to you, God can turn his heart. He will change his mind. I wish I would say something here. I know of the testimony of a young man from Aunchi Polytechnic who read for the exam, entered the exam hall as he was able to write. He did not just know what happened to him, he became blank. I read him. I believe him. I don't know. I, if I was confused trying to scrabble things, they say, submit your paper. I, as he submitted the paper, I went back home and said, Father, you know I read. I don't just know what happened, but I cannot fail. I can't. If Jesus was the one that wrote this exam, angels were assisting. Hello now. Angels were assisting.
assist him on this matter. Oh God, I can't fail. Uh, you know, Lord, I didn't. I don't know what I'm. I must pass. And the lecturer is a Christian. The lecturer was marking the script. When the lecturer got to the voice screen, he was hearing a voice. Add more mark. Add more mark. Add more mark. He pushed the script to another corner and said, Something is wrong. He brought it in again. The voice came back. Add more mark. Add more mark. What's happening? He calculated it. The voice caught at it something. They said, Add more mark. Add. He closed the whole thing and went to sleep. When he closed his eyes to sleep, in his dream, he heard a voice telling him, Add. When God trouble a man, you will know that the trouble of God, water can quench it. The only thing that can quench it is to do what he said. I hear what I'm saying now. And the man woke up the next day, took this. What's happening? He went to the place, the department, and he cost us a particular number. So, whoever has this particular number, I want to see you in my office. And when the boy came, he looked at the boy and said, Who are you? The boy said, Sir, you call my matric number. He said, Who are you? He said, I don't understand. He said, Why are you tormenting me? Did he just say, Add more man? He said, hey, Okay, sir. He said, What really happened is that I read over, I don't know what happened. So after I've been praying now, sir, as I talked to you, I've known it for the past three days. The man said, eh. <laughs> Okay. When you move God, God will move men. It's a secret that many people don't know. That's why they're always going everywhere saying, Lao, wo, wo, Lao, wo, wo, and they say, Come on, get out of here. Never beg a man who you are not sure of his answer if you have not spoken to God about that man. It's a secret of the kingdom that he goes ahead of you to turn the heart of a king towards you. So the first language of the kingdom is we only say what God says. The second language of the, of the kingdom, the language of faith, is that we only say what we want to see. Everybody say, you say what you want to see. Please, please, hope you know that I'm not advising you. I'm telling you what you must do this year. If you will see the full prophecy of God, you say what you want to see, what you want to see, what you want to see. What I learned that some years ago. Say what you want to, not what you see. You say what you want to see. So the question is, what do you want to see this year in your life? That's what you should be saying. I have never opened my mouth to speak anything negative of my children. I will never do that for life. Very stubborn, stubborn boy. He will soon enter into class two. Stubbornness. The stubbornness you saw before, it was kindergarten. Now this boy will begin to, oh my God, you have, God never allowed you to see a stubborn child. You say what you want to see. Don't walk to your business and look at it and say, ah, I've started a new year. Now look at this shop. Every year just dry. You say what you want. When you say dry, angels of God will be available to dry it very well. They will, they will dry it with the oven of God. But you, you close up. But you walk into the shop. Glory be to God. Giants are rising. It's a year of wet. This place will soon be filled up. Very soon I will do extension outside. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You say what you want to see. What is the language of faith? What is the language of the kingdom? But me, therefore, we say only what agrees with the scripture. Please look up this morning. You say what agrees with the word of God. This is how we speak in this kingdom. Let me give you a quick picture this morning. Look up now. Look up. If you... Can, can I get 
what the Lord is saying. You stay in the center. Okay, you stay at that edge. Now look at this. Every one of us, our life is divided into TV category. Your what? Your past. Your what? And your what? The quickest way to end up in a life of backwardness is to judge your present. Those that run forward and look backward, what will they do? They will fall. Have you ever seen? Have you, have you tried it before? If you, you can try it, it's not hard. Every, all of you have legs. Just do on your mark, set, go. If, but don't break your neck and say, I'm the one that advised you. Please don't do it. Are, are, you, are you what I'm saying now? You can't go forward and look what? Backward. The only way to go forward. Please, look at me this morning. It's to look at the future. So people of God, every time God speaks, look up now. Every time God speaks, look at God. When God wants to speak to you, this is where he speaks to you from. He speaks to you from your where. I hope you know that God is already in 2024. You understand what I'm saying now? Huh? He has gone ahead of you one year and he has seen what your life can become. And now he begins to speak to you. Power. You can own that company. Because he has already seen it that it is a possibility for you. And you look at him and say, me? Me that is so broke and so poor. Unfortunately, when Satan wants to speak to you, he speaks to you from your past. Have you forgotten where you come from? Who is great in your family? Your past. Your history. Every believer must decide in this new year either to be led by his past or by his future. In the past, you can be a nobody, but in the future, Remember Joseph, in his past, he was a prisoner. But in his future, what was he? A prime minister. Can you use calculator to calculate how a prisoner can become a prime minister? So that means that sometimes your past cannot predict your future. Am I talking to somebody here? Sometimes, where you are being cannot predict where God is taking you to. And that is the reason why if you are going to enter into the future God has ordained for you, you can only enter by working with God with faith. With what? Some, some TV weeks ago I was praying and the Lord came to me and he was speaking to me. And there were some things that the Lord was telling me my head wanted to catch fire. I said, Lord, this, is, this thing is too, is too wonderful. I mean, how can me, how can this thing be? Me. This thing is bigger than what I can no, don't talk like that. And then he took me to the story of Abraham in the Bible. When God brought out Abraham and said, Abraham, look at the stars. Count them. Abraham, one, two, three, four, one hundred. Ah, sir, I, I cannot count them, but they are innumerable. And God said, yes, Abraham, so shall your children be. You remember this man, he had no child. He said, Abraham believed. The Lord says, son, if you really want to see the glory that I have for you. He said, you must learn to dream with me. He said, because I am a dreamer. God is a dreamer. He can look at a nobody and dream. Mm. See this man. Nobody know him. Mm. Within one year, mm. he will be the one in charge of this state. Mm. And everybody will say, how possible? And they will say, this can only be God. He will give me the glory. I. And they will come and say, brother, I had a dream for you. You will take over this state in a year. If you are not a dreamer, you can't walk with God. To be able to dream with God. I say, it is possible. It is possible. In 2023, your logo should be, it is possible. It should be what? It should be what? Because if billionaires are rising, what will you say? When God says, take over generation is coming, what will you say? When the Lord says, you are rising as a giant, what do you say? Those that ask, how will it happen? Like Zechariah, they close their mouth. God says, Zechariah, you become dumb for asking this stupid question. In this kingdom, you don't ask questions when God has spoken. You only say, Father, let it be done according to your word. 
the way God will do it, you do not know. But if you follow him, you will be amazed that God has his plan. People of God, God will never say a thing if he does not have a plan. The way God wants to raise you and move you to the new level, he already has a plan. Somebody say, God has a plan for my life. But that plan that God has for you, you can only enter that plan by walking it with him by faith. But let me ask you a question. Please, pay attention this one. Are you being blessed now? Are you being blessed here? Let me ask you a question. Hi. Okay. Have you ever, as an adult, a, or a parent, ever been left alone with a two-year-old child? Only both of you, and both of you begin to have a conversation. It's an experience. The, the way the child will be talking, and the way you will be talking, sometimes you will have to reduce your own to go and agree with him. Eh? Are you what I'm saying now? You hear you just say, Daddy, see, I will, I will play so I say, yeah, Daddy, I want to put a play in my pocket. Look like <laughs> Have you not seen children? You, you don't children have said that. My, 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 my little boy who is just four years with him, he said, Daddy, come down, let me drive. Allah. <laughs> you, you, you will only drive to a car, not a vehicle. <laughs> but to him, he said, I can never drive. So imagine if it, it is myself and that little child that is strolling. The conversation will not be straightforward. Because the way he's talking and the way I'm talking is totally different. Have you ever had, okay, let me break it even easier. Have you ever had a friend or a visitor come to visit you and both of you are talking and you're, you're you know the rhyme? The way you are thinking is different for the way. Have you seen something like that before? Eh? It, it cannot just rhyme. It's just like you are a lover of football now and you come to visit me in my house. I only me in the parlor. And we're looking for a topic to discuss. And you now say, let's talk about football, man of God. You will be so frustrated. You will be so frustrated. You know, I, I really don't have much to say about that. Come on, are, are you aware of chess? I said, I'm aware of chess. And I said, no, he clocked that Jose Mario is the coach. You look at me and say, which year are you? Because that's the last I know. The reason I'm saying that is, if you are going to walk with God, you must talk like God. Otherwise, you can't walk with Him. There will always be a conflict. Are you getting what I'm saying? There will always be a conflict. Do you know that if you are an owner of a business, you can even sack your sales girl because you do not understand her? I don't understand you. The way you are talking, the way you are thinking is different from my own. You go, 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 go. Two cannot work together except they agree. So if we are going to allow God to take us to our future, we must speak in a way that agrees with God. Now, let's give example. Genesis chapter 1, give up from verse 1. Let's go some, a little bit practical now. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1. He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And then the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Look up now. He said, God made the heaven and the earth. And when God came, He looked at the earth. Everywhere was dark. He said, Everywhere was dark. And God looked at darkness. If you enter into your house and you see everywhere is dark, what will be the first thing you will see? Everywhere is just dark. But if God measured darkness, darkness will multiply. Look at what God said. And God said, God did not speak the problem. He spoke the solution. Unfortunately, we speak the problem, so the problem multiplies. He said, let there be light. And there was light. The question somebody now wants to ask is, where did the light come from? Hello now? Because every year was that, there was no light. Where did the light come from? I taught you TV weeks ago that the word of God is a raw material. Anytime God speaks, it is the raw material to create what he has said. So light came out from the word of God. When he 
saw darkness what did he say what did he say what did he say when you see scarcity what do you say let there be abundance 